federal government has revealed plans to create 1 million jobs as a way of tackling youth unemployment across all the 774 local government areas of the country. Announcing this in Abuja, the Minister of State for Youth Development, Comrade Ayodili Olawande, said the federal government is determined to educate inspire and connect Nigerian youth to careers and opportunities in the insurance sector using the power of digital technology. Now, the minister added that the federal government is committed to increasing youth participation in the insurance sector to create jobs and enhance financial inclusion. Now, international finance and economic expert Mukta Mohammed joins me now for more conversation on this issue. Uh, good morning to you, Mukta. Mukta, can you hear me? Good, good morning. morning. Yes. Good morning. I can hear you. Good morning. All right. Good morning. Let's start with uh, this uh, Naira for crude. Uh, I think it's a welcome development, in, in as much as uh, Nigerians have been waiting since October first uh, for you know the final, the formal kickoff. But then it's, the federal government announced that it has actually kicked off uh, selling crude oil in Naira to Dangote and other refiners in the country. First off. Um, what's your take on this new uh, development? Um, would it uh, actually bring down um, the so much demand for dollar in the country in your opinion um, yes um it could bring down so much demand on dollar justin if um, the data that we got is anything to go by the data from cbn says that uh, 40 percent of our fx pressure are normally for those that are trying to re import refined petroleum products into the country so that will bring down the pressure on the naira we, you know when 40 percent is reduced in terms of pressure that is very huge so hopefully that will bring the the, 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 the pressure on of the naira for me yes that could also that could help us um in the in the short term to stabilize the currency and in the long term to continue to maintain stability but um you also have to know that um, this will also come with a cost and that will that cost will uh, might just be our fx reserve because um that may won't have more um, effects from 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 sale of crude oil if some of those crude oils are not being purchased in Naira. Um, but the 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 good thing is um, if if those um, if we are able to improve production, and because now we we had last week we agreed with OPEC to 1.5 million um, barrel per day in terms of OPEC production, which is good. Remember that we've not been able to even meet the 1.7, uh, the government budgeted. So if we're able to improve production, um, then that also will, will be will help our FX reserve and that will also improve our liquidity. And we also have to remember that the, the amount that will be supplied into Dangote refinery will, is not part of um, the 1.5 million um crude oil because that will be done locally so um we, the, the game changer whereby we can benefit in the long run and in the short run in term is to improve um, 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 um uh, is to improve production well speaking of improved um production but what nigerians really want to know will be the pump price of um petrol you know with this um policy you know uh one would have thought that uh, is actually aimed at um, stabilizing pump prices um you know uh, resulting in lower, more predictable fuel costs for consumers. But do we see this happening anytime soon, or just um, what is your projection if there's any uh, hope, you know, for the common Nigerian? Um, Justin, the first, um, first of all, uh, for me, yeah. um, last me, I think number one is supply, supply availability first, okay, and so that we don't have to queue for fuel. So that is first and foremost. So we have availability of product. Then when it comes with availability again, it could take some time. It comes with market forces also. And that could be helped if um, NMPC itself also are able to start um, refining their own locally. Also remember that um, even if we are waiting forever, one of these days, will hopefully before the end of this year, Otako refinery will come on stream, Wari refinery will come on stream. Um, so, so that also could help um, because competition will normally drive down prices. And also, don't forget that there are also some other um, um, companies that are involved in um, 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 building of um, 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 refineries also. So, but again, um, this policy for now, it seems it will only favor Dangote because Dangote is the only refinery in Nigeria at this moment that is involved in local refining of PMS. Others are maybe in diesel, aviation, and 
that so in terms of PMA is only dangote so it, it it will favor that remember that that agreement also comes with uh, with by mr president if you listen to mr president's speech when he made it mm -hmm. say they will come with a fixed exchange rate now that means it will not be the normal willing buyer willing seller okay. there will not be the exchange that will be fluctuating it will be fixed for a particular time and so hopefully we don't we've not gotten the information on what that rate is what how much is that exchange rate even if the dangote is going to be buying in 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 naira what is the exchange rate so that is the determining factor that will determine the price because what we will see you have to look at that exchange rate and by and by the 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 the, 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 the economic of importation remember that is according to nmpc said uh, or people are still free to import and even them and npc say they may also decide to import and um, that what it means is that if it's cheaper to import they also will continue to import and that also could be a competition for dangote and so i think it's it's, it's going to be a win-win for nigeria but in the short term i think what we should be more uh, uh, um, um, looking for is availability for us and i think uh, when with those exchange rate comes in even if it is not favorable, but when market forces comes in, that competition comes in, then it could drive down um, um, price. But for now, I think supply is key, and uh, we don't know the exchange rate. We are waiting. It's just a, a, an official statement that said uh, they can now uh, they're now selling crude for Naira for local refinery. But the, that that statement did not come with what is the exchange they are using. So hopefully, the exchange rate will not be one thousand six hundred. <laughs> could be the real value uh, of the naira which is with assistance that we keep saying that the naira is on the value hopefully um if that is what is happening then the cost of pms will come down but if it's by and by the normal official market willing buyer willing sellers then it it might go down because of that you remove um, cost of shipment you remove some um, handling charges and all that could help drive it down but it will not be as much as if the exchange rate is very favorable, then we could see a drastic um, uh, 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 reduction in terms of price. And you know that, uh, like I normally say, Nigeria economy is a petrol economy. So if we are able to bring down that exchange rate, I mean, maintain availability and then see the price come down, then definitely in one way we have tackled inflation. Okay, but generally, you will agree with me that um, the capacity of local refiners will be built up with this new development, right? Look, the good thing is that we are going to attract a lot of investors. Um, a lot of investors will come in. Um, oh. Finally, the PIB is finally working. Oh. So, and it's going to bring more competitors into the market, like I said. Um, some uh, independence marketers are saying that they will also still be involved in importation if it's cheaper for them. So we are going to see a lot. Of, uh, don't be surprised when you begin to see major, major companies like um, Tel, Exxon, Mobi, and others also say, look, we want to be involved in the um, local refinery of Nigeria um, 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 petrol if it becomes valuable. But like I said, all these are when uh, uh, when all the parameters are right. So oh. for now, I think we are very optimistic. It's a good thing. And um, let's see how that takes us. For me, I keep saying availability is key before yeah. we begin to talk about price Pricing. reduction. Okay, let's move away from um, you know petroleum and talk about um, another development uh, which happened over the weekend, which um, is um, the value added taxation. Uh, the federal government says 63 items you know, have been exempted from value added tax. Taiwo Oyedele, chairman of the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Burdens, disclosed this you know, on uh, X on Friday. Uh, it comes two days after the Minister of Finance and Coordinator Minister of the Economy, Wale Edward, announced the uh, introduction of concessions aimed at revitalizing the oil and gas sector. But Mukta, let us look at this, uh, you know, these items uh, because uh, lots of um, um, items are here. We know of um, CNG, um, LPG, uh, liquefied um, petroleum um, gas, um, dual fuel vehicles, dedicated LPG vehicles, um, electric vehicles. I don't know if we have electric vehicles here in Nigeria, but CNG cylinders, CNG cascades, uh, gas generators, steel pipes, steel valves and fittings, uh, steel itself, pressure relief valves, uh, 
regulator body pressure gauge metering and measuring equipment dispensing equipment safety features gas water heaters and a whole lot of them that I mentioned now so what's what's your opinion about this uh, recent development reduction or exemption rather of um, VAT on these um, 63 items um, it's a good development for the oil and gas sector. I think for me, it's the oil and gas sector that seems to be <laughs> yes, seriously, begin yeah. to come up. Mm. Yeah, when you begin when you begin to come up with a strategy that will help that sector grow, for me, that's key. Um, mm. It's very important. So for me, I think um, that sector will benefit more. And, uh, and then again, where it will affect the ordinary Nigeria, I think, is in the area of um, 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 gas, especially um, house um, um, house gas that we've, we've had challenge it uh, with gas these days uh, people it has come up drastically yeah. so with this um, then I will see that the household income the solar income might might be might improve because of um, the 10 percent withholding tax on every gas for her will, will, will not be down and that could bring the price by 10 percent and so that is a, a, a lot when you think of that uh, or what what disposable income will be available for household Especially now that they say the small um, gas cylinder is about 12 point, 12.5 gas cylinder goes for about 1,000 something. So by we remove 10 percent from it, that means you've obviously drive um, that price by almost um, 900 naira, sure. one, uh, 900 naira, 1,000 naira. That is very huge. And then the good thing is that again that will um, um, bring um, um, home, like I keep saying, local production. We could begin to see local production of all the, uh, of all these items yes in nigeria that could also be a game changer and that also will create employment for a lot of people uh, i'm also excited about the electric cars because i don't know how many electric cars uh, how many charging points you will, will you get to do electric cars and that uh, um, that i think we are dreaming in the for the long term maybe we are looking at the future which is good Okay. Uh, CMG buses i think that also is good and um, that means that uh, when finally we begin to run public transport by CMG buses, then the cost of transportation will be, be very low, and that also will help um, improve the uh, disposable income in the economy. And you know our economy is a consumer-driven economy, so when yeah. disposable income improves, I mean, consumer space also will improve. There are a lot of business will also benefit from that. So it's, it's a win-win. I, I keep saying that's one committee that has really ticked the box. Um, they, they, they tend to know what to do, how to do it, and then um, to come up with those reports. But we should also not forget that um, it will take effect in January. So we shouldn't just start thinking that when you go to the gas station today to buy uh, gas, then the price would have gone down by 10% because the uh, beholding tax has been suspended. No, it kicks up in January. So, um, but the preparatory ground for it is being put in place. And I think uh, it's a good development. Okay, finally, uh, the federal government seems to have the young people and, of course, digital economy on, on mind. And it says uh, or has revealed plans to create about one million jobs as a way of uh, tackling youth unemployment across all the 774 local government areas. It was announced, uh, you know, on, on Friday. But then, when I think of government policies, as though we, we make all these announcements and um, over time, uh, they seem to be like a tall order. At the end of the day, uh, we don't seem to achieve all that um, government has planned, you know, for the young people. But right now, it's saying that about one million jobs, you know, in the digital economy. How feasible is this, Mokhtar, as we round off? Well, um, it's very busy when you talk about the digital economy. Nigeria is one of the most vibrant in Africa. Oh. Um, but like um, like you just said, sometimes they make this pronouncement that no clear-cut roadmap in achieving it. Oh. Um, the minister have said was complaining of recent about the damage, um, um, about, uh, the damage um, te uh, the tech city in tech in center Kano. that is set up in Kano State yes. uh, during the NBAC governance protest. Oh, so. Yes. Uh, hopefully, he was saying that the government said that all through all the old states, mm. so create um, employment for innovative youth. I don't think that has happened yet. So I totally agree with you. Sometimes we just make those pronouncements without putting um, the work into it. It's just a mere pronouncement. We need to get the roadmap. How will this one million job comes in, and if it f eventually comes, which it, which mm. would be very very good for us, especially now that. Uh, the latest data we have is that about 133 million Nigerians have now gone into the poverty level. So oh. those are things that will bring up um, 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 middle class again. Because like I always say now, 
in this country we have the very rich and the very poor there's not the middle class and the middle class are the ones that drive economic um, prosperity and when they are not there definitely yeah. you'll be struggling to grow your economy so um hopefully they will they'll come up with a roadmap you know in okay. nigeria is after they have said it then they begin to say how do we go about it yeah. that for me is a challenge but i think it's a tall order but yeah. i think it's achievable if right. we have a, a a very good roadmap all right thank you so much mokta for your time and all the all the wonderful inputs that you have brought on the show today we do appreciate them my pleasure, Justin. Do have a pleasant week. All right, you too. And that's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.